Welcome back to Let's Play the Blue Marlin. We're starting in Kauna Kakai. You'll notice that the game is moving quite quickly. I decided to, as in the last Hawaii video, speed up the game rather than cut out big sections of monotonous driving around the boat. I decided to speed up the game to four times speed during boat driving sequences, but leave the fish biting sequences at normal speed. All of the audio, the music is added in post, so you won't hear the sound effects of the boat driving, nor will you hear the sound effects of the rod clinking. This will leave these Let's Plays a little bit less accurate uh, and a little bit more difficult maybe to learn the techniques of watching the line clinking, but it will make them a little bit more enjoyable to watch. Also, the music won't always be synced up to the events happening. I will uh, put music on in the, in the levels and some fish biting music, but I, I won't make any effort to try to line up everything perfectly. Another positive on that is that the music won't be losing its audio track from the sound effects. A lot of these NES games use a limited audio track on the, on the NES so that when a sound effect was playing, it would have to drop a track of music. And a lot of times it would drop the bass line or it would drop a harmony part as we catch this first billfish. <coughs> we have a approximately 700 pound blue marlin. So we're back to the fast boat driving scene, as you can see. The, the levels here in Hawaii, it's interesting, as, the, as we go on, not only do the fish get more difficult to catch, they, they get larger and more difficult to catch, but also the levels become a little bit more difficult to get around. There are more rocks, there are more islands in the middle of levels that make it more difficult to track fish for a long distance. You know, those, those first, the first days, especially Palm Beach, just a long horizontal stretch of, of sea. Now we have a little bit more difficult pieces to have to navigate. You see I'm changing lures as we go through here. It gets harder to raise marlin here as, as we're in these later levels. The technique with the whale, when they're going just straight up and down like this and, and not at an angle, whales are, are quite easy to follow. You can just use the A button to go forward on your boat and the B button to reverse. And once you get your lure lined up behind the whale, you can just go forward and reverse because there's no risk of the whale biting and you hooking the whale like there would be if you just had a bouncing school of fish that was going back and forth. Your, your lure can cross over the top of the whale without any risk. Until you find the right lure, as I did, to hook a billfish or, if you're not lucky, a tuna behind the whale. What you can't see, and the reason sometimes the the reeling stops, and you can watch my the first Let's Play of the, the first day in Florida of this game to see what I'm talking about, is the the line will clink. I'll go back to real time as we are going to change our location. So I'm Kauna Kakai to Kaului. I'm not sure if I'm... Well, I'm probably sure that I'm butchering these names of Hawaiian cities trying to pronounce them correctly. And without looking them up, I wonder if the designers of the game actually made these day one, day two, day three of Hawaii take place on the same island even of Hawaii, or if these cities that I'm going between are hundreds of miles apart. I'm not sure about that. The other choice in Hawaii too is Honolulu, which I know is on Oahu, but I don't know if these other ones are on Oahu, or if the uh, in one of the one of the Hawaii days, one of the choices is Hilo, which is on the Big Island, but I don't know if the other cities that day are also on the Big Island of Hawaii. Here's a shark that I reeled in to see how big it was. You don't get any experience from sharks. And the only area that my player needs more experience in, or can, can gain levels in, is the skill category, and that's the the trickiest one to gain points in, because it's all these hidden metrics of this game. Here I've got another billfish. Trying to gain skill points by by making the right choice when you have the option to make a choice, like when it says, wow, did you see that marlin jump? And you can pick, wind the reel, or pull the rod, or do nothing. Well, th those choices, whether or not you cor choose correctly, are random, but I suspect it's not always a 50-50 shot, and I think the higher skill you get, the 
better your chances are of choosing the right one, even though it's just it's a random shot. I don't think it's always 50-50, because when you are poor in those skill areas, when I, when I play this on an emulator and I use save states to go back, I'm reversing the boat here. It makes it a little bit easier to reel the fish, and I'll talk more about that, because this fight gets a little bit long. But when you have those choices, it's... it's becomes, when I when I use the save states, it becomes difficult to get the right choice, even when you're saving and loading save states. Sometimes it can take four or five times before something will be the right choice. But as you gain skill points in that, and gain levels, suddenly you're making the right choice almost every time. But to gain points in it, you have to be picking correctly, so it really is stacked against you. You have to have a lot of decision chances. And you have to land the fish that you're making decisions in. So if you make a couple of good decisions, and then you lose the marlin, say, to cutting the line on the propeller as you get close to the boat, you don't get credit, I don't think, for those stats. And I haven't found anywhere on the internet of any tool-assisted speedrunners who have looked into that. So with this fish, you can see on the right-hand corner, there is a diagram of how well the fish is hooked. And when the hook is moving a lot like that, that means that the hook's about to come out. And pulling back on the rod, and also moving the rod side to side, will they tire the fish out and they let you pull in extra line, but the disadvantage is that they work towards pulling the, the line out of the fish, pulling the hook out. So what I'm doing is, I'm pulling and reeling until it clinks, like the line's under pressure, and then I wait until the pressure is gone when the clinking stops, that you can't hear. And I also watch for that hook to go back into kind of level 1 risk status, where it's not moving as much. And as soon as I see it hit back to level 1 status, I pull back and reel as much as I can until it starts to clink. Now I'm reaching the danger zone of cutting the line on the propeller. Once it's inside of 20 feet, and here he jumped just seven feet out, so here I have to decide, wind, swing, or do nothing. I wound, it was the right choice, and I got him in. If you swing, make the wrong choice, you lose a bunch of line. There's a blue marlin, 800 pounds. That might be the day winner. That might be the day winner. But once you get inside of 20 feet, you're at risk of them trying to cut the line on the propeller, and that's one of those really frustrating choices that you just have to flip a coin. Which one am I going to pick? It might be right, might be wrong. Maybe both of them are wrong in that particular instance. And once you have these bigger fish, if you make the wrong choice, the line is cut immediately. So I've hooked another one here, and I'm going to do the same thing. I notice that the, the fish is hooked deeply. So it starts on a little bit better hook situation for me than the other one. A lot of times these marlin will be hooked in the in the level one risk factor already of the, of the hooking. Here's another did you see him jump? Wind or swing? I usually go for wind. I don't know if it really makes a difference, but I, all I lost there was a bunch of line. We have another chance. Wow, did you see him jump? Swing? Too bad. Line is reeling out. Lost a bunch more line. These marlin will do a regular jump, often shortly after you hook them. That's where they don't give you an option. The marlin just jumps and takes 20 or 30 feet of line. And that's how a lot of these fish will will get you, is if, you, if they are large enough that you can't pull in line without losing them on the hook and without breaking your line between jumps. If they win the jumping battle, they will eventually win your battle, and they'll take between 20 and 30 feet on any given jump. So if you can't get 20 or 30 feet in on the fish before the next jump occurs, probably they are going to win. The fish will eventually pull you out to 512 feet, which is the, the maximum of your line. If, you, if the fish gets to 512, uh, they, you'll lose them. They'll pull your line all the way out. And you get into risky situations here. He's trying to cut the line on the prop. I made the right choice there. Let's see if I can get him in. I do get him in. Let's see what we're looking at. A striped marlin, 500 pounds. The fish felt bigger than 500 when I was fighting it, but... Oh well, I've already got a bigger one in the bank that might be a day winner. Let's try the other spot. In this case, it's Honolulu, the background of the city. 
And this is a, a level that has that road that cuts it in half. You can cross under two high bridges on this level of Honolulu. I visited Honolulu. I don't remember a bridge going across the sea. Not that I would know where that bridge was going in a place like Honolulu. I don't know where you're fishing for these huge marlin within easy sight of land or under bridges. But I've already been to three cities and it's only quarter to ten in the morning. This game uses the 24-hour clock, by the way, so that time says 9.44, 9.45. Now, your day ends at 4 p.m., which is 1600 in this game. And I'm used to that a lot more in Ireland. They write down, the, write down a lot of times in a 24-hour clock, but they never say something is going to happen at 1400 or 1730. They still will say AM and PM. So I'm never quite sure why they use the 24-hour clock on things, but verbally they'll never say 1700, 1800. Strange stuff here. And the instruction manual of this game conflicts with that because it gives you the starts at 6 a.m., goes till 4 p.m., but in the game, it's the 24-hour clock, so a kid like young me would be very confused. So I had to jump, and I lost some line there on the jump. But after I make a couple more correct decisions, I'll get that level up. You'll see. You'll see. But there was that the regular marlin jump. That regular marlin jump that pulls out 20 or 30 feet of line. And if they're just too big for your capacity, or your ability to reel, or just your skill at the game and knowing how to how to game the the system of, of hook and line tension and tiring fish out. Here we go. Here's we have another. Why did you see him jump? Wind the reel was not the right one. Lost a big chunk of line there. So you can gain some line and have the fish get tired. Or you can uh, lose a bunch of line and not have the fish get tired. And the, the fish, we haven't seen very much of the fish getting the little sweat marks in these fights. These larger fish are very, very difficult to tire out. They require a lot of pulling back and rocking back and forth. That will tire the fish out and lead to those sweat marks, but that pulls the hook out of, the, of their mouth quite quickly. So you really sacrifice a lot if you want to just try and pull and tire the fish out. And sometimes the fish won't get tired before the hook comes all the way out of their mouth. Especially if they're hooked on the the level 1 risk where they're where it's moving just a little bit. I'm not sure what to actually call these levels. Level 0, level 1, and level 2. Here I'm reversing the boat. What reversing the boat does is it lets you pull in a few extra feet of line before it starts to clink. And the reason I pull back, and you have to just get a feel for the game if you're playing the game, the reason I pull back before reeling is that it, pulling back gives you some slack to reel in, which is, which is a lot like fighting a real large fish on the ocean. They'll pull up and reel down. Pull up and reel down. So they'll pull up maybe six feet, and then they'll reel the rod tip back down to the water and then pull up again. So they, they kind of pump the fish that way. And then that way the designers did get this, I, you know, you almost want to say correct. I know it's very difficult on the NES to simulate something as real life as fishing, but, you know, they do their best with these sports games to try to simulate something that happens in real life. If you just grab the reel and start reeling, if you just hit the A button to reel from, from not pulling back, the character, when he grabs the reel, and there's a lot of these reel smoking events when you're doing a lot of reeling, and usually I douse with water. Uh, sometimes that's the right choice. Sometimes that says too bad your line is damaged, and by the way, you lose a bunch of line. If you free the drag, you lose a bunch of line, and uh, that you know just says, do your best. It won't damage anything, but you'll lose a bunch of line no matter what, and then do nothing. Sometimes you can damage your line too, so I just go for dousing the water. Here's a approximately 700 blue marlin. And here we are back to cruising. And there's a, a whale with a marlin already behind him. So this was in that manual where they don't actually tell you to get your lure behind a school of fish, but to drive around until you see a marlin behind a school of fish. 
that's what I used to look for for hours with this game when I was a kid, watching for a school of fish that had a marlin raised behind it. So this one I reversed the boat almost immediately because it's quite sizable. Here we have a wow, did you see him jump? Wrong choice. Those get quite frustrating when you just have nothing, nothing you can do. They're just pure luck, and as you level yourself up on them, it becomes a lot more manageable. You start to feel a lot better about those, because you can get some bonus tiredness on the fish, although it doesn't always translate into the fish actually getting the sweat mark. So, I'm not sure if I fully believe when the game says the fish is getting tired. Some of that is just translation errors, and some of it in these games is just flat out lying. But I blame a lot of a lot more of them to translation errors when I read things in the manual or text in the game that's unclear. I think a lot of that is due to translation errors and sometimes they're they're harmless, but sometimes they really are quite nasty. They can really mislead you. These translation errors that that the programmers they didn't care about translation or localizing these these games. It's like, as long as it's in English, kind of, it's all right. Like they didn't think about when it says, Hey, fisherman's name, I think I feel a bite on your rod. They didn't stop and think what that would sound like. Not that I don't, not that they would probably care. Nintendo, double-checking, rubber-stamping all of those translations while we're pulling in this fish. And this one's quite, quite a big one. You can see my my guy is really slowly pulling back, and, and you can't see when I actually hit the down arrow key on this fish. And when you get these realist smoking events, you lose all this line. Whenever they happen, your line is damaged and you lose a big chunk of line. And now I'm, he's in that danger zone, and then he jumps and pulls back another 30 feet, so I'm back out. These could just can get really frustrating because sometimes, as happens with these guys, they you'll you'll get the reel is smoking, you'll lose some line, then they'll jump shortly after that, and you lose a bunch more line, and then by the time you get them back into where you had them, you'll get that same cycle again: reel is smoking, jump, or in this case, he's trying to cut the line on the propeller. Wrong choice. Snap. Had a nice big one. That may have been bigger than my 800 pounder, but c'est la vie. After a long fight, when you finally get him close, you get faced with a luck choice like that, and snap. Oh well, that'll happen. This one I can tell is a lot smaller. You can see I'm pulling in a lot more line with every pump, every pullback, getting a lot more line with these. And as, as you get them close, you get a good feel for how quickly your line goes into level 1 clinking and level 2 clinking. Blue Marlin, about 300 pounds. I'm just going to let that one go just to save some time on weighing in. Here's one behind a whale. But this one, you see we do not see the fin above the water. If you were listening to the game music, I, there we get a go for it. He's very exhausted. And we'll pull him in. 400 pound tuna. Now they're good for experience. So they're okay to check in. And we got the go for it. He's very exhausted uh, message. And I don't know if you can affect that. Here's another one that's another tuna behind a school of fish. I don't know if you can affect or make that happen. That go for it. He's very exhausted. Sometimes it happens right at the beginning of a fight. And sometimes it happens into a fight. I haven't quite gotten that down. I don't know if you can actually affect it. If you can, it would be fantastic, because sometimes that's the only way you can win a day on these games, is you hook a fish that's larger than you're capable of bringing in, and just hope for that. Go for it. He's very exhausted, and sometimes even then, it's difficult to pull those fish in. So here's a decent one, but you can see I'm getting big chunks of line with each pump back, so I don't think it's going to be bigger than the 800 that I already have in the boat. 400 on the Blue Marlin. Okay, back under the bridge. 
See the sun moves across the sky a little bit as we go through the day. Now we're getting just after noon, 12.06. You'll see when the next hour passes, it'll be 13. But in the manual, they don't say what that means. So when I was a kid, I was like, it says 4 o'clock. But the time says 14. Does that mean 4? Does 14 mean 4? I didn't know if the time was some kind of strange other system of time that they use in other places. Like, is that Hawaiian time? I didn't know video games came from Japan back then. Is that Hawaiian time? Is that how they measure time there? So why is it like that in Florida? Here's about 600 pound blue marlin. Bouncing school back to it. And this is just one of the fish from the school. I wasn't careful on my lure placement. So we'll have to pull in this thing, whatever it is. 200 pound barracuda. Okay. Now, in real life, 200 pound barracuda. Nice. And like those 600 pound tuna. Ooh, I just ran over the middle of a school with a billfish behind it. That was silly. Trying to position my lure right there by the, by the marlin. And that one you, might have been hard to see in the fast speed. It's a tuna. I pulled through the seagulls and raised a marlin behind the seagulls. I was turning back to hook that marlin behind the seagulls when I raised this thing behind a school of fish on my way over to that marlin behind the seagulls. And then this thing ended up being a tuna, which, nice, but... All right, here we go. Let's see if this one can be bigger. He's gonna make his jump. There it is. Usually they make a jump after two or three uh, pump and reels. I'm gonna have to reverse the boat on this one. Reversing the boat uh, affects how much you tire the fish out, so it lets you reel in more line, but it does not tire the fish out as much. Also, according to the game, according to the manual, I should say, if you have a loose drag where, where they can pull line out faster, they'll become tired faster. But if you free that drag up, or at the beginning of the fight, the drag is loosened all the way, they take line out at an incredible speed. That if you just let that go, they would, take, they, they would take your line out in a few seconds. Your line would be pulled completely out. And so, I haven't noticed letting them just run with it. I haven't noticed them tiring themselves out. You can do what's called thumbing the reel, um, where in real life, this is where the fisher just puts his or her thumb right on the spool and holds it there against the fish pulling. There's an 800 pound blue. So that one matches the the approximate weight of the biggest one I have on board right now. So thumbing the reel, you just put your thumb on there and slow the pull of line, slow or stop the pull of line. Uh, if you do that too much, you get a you get smoking gloves instead of a smoking reel. It says your gloves are smoking, what will you do? And you can make the wrong choice there. Uh, and making the right choice there doesn't really help you at all. Just like when the reel is smoking, making the right choice doesn't actually help anything. You still lose a little bit of line, and you just are still fighting the fish there. You don't lose as much line, but uh, when, it's, when it is smoking and you make the wrong choice, you lose a bunch of line. And then it says your line is damaged, and I assume that means that it can hold less, but I've had that reel smoking many times in a fight and not ever really noticed uh, my line breaking more easily or, or clinking more easily. So that might be either a programming error, which was common in these games, or again, a translation error. Like the famous Final Fantasy 1, your characters get put in the darkness status. Uh, it doesn't, they, the programmers didn't actually put anything in for that to happen. So if they're darkness, it's supposed to lower their accuracy but uh, in Final Fantasy 1, it doesn't actually lower anything metrically of their accuracy. It says they're in darkness, but it doesn't change anything. So it's getting later in the day here. It's 13.49. I've got just a couple hours of game time left. Got a Marlin trying to cut the line on my prop. There we go, made the good choice got him in, so I would have lost him. That would have been an instant fish loss had I 
chosen incorrectly there. 500 pound, and my skill level goes up to C. There's that level up. That's crucial. That's crucial. That's huge. Getting that skill level up. And if I if I really wanted to, to game the system and get those levels up. Alright, let's weigh in. I think I might between the, the two eight hundred pounders, I might have the, the tournament winner. Three ninety four. So you can see the fish get bigger. Confetti's flying. Fish get bigger on the on the scales, and the, the biggest ones, their their bill will actually break that cement at the base. 707, their bill actually goes into the ground up there, and the biggest ones goes way down. So there's actually one size larger than that. 796, last one. 807, let's see if I won. That's me. If you want to, you can write down my password and continue.